Let's take you to the White House now where President Biden is speaking. International Association of Sheet Metal and Air and Rail and Transportation Workers Union and the other labor unions engaged. And this is a win for tens of thousands of rail workers and for their dignity and the dignity of their work. It's a recognition of that. During these early, dark, uncertain days of the pandemic, they showed up so every American could keep going. They worked tirelessly through the pandemic to ensure that families and communities got the deliveries they needed during these difficult few years. And because of the labor agreement, those rail workers will get better pay, a 24 percent wage increase over the next five years, improved working conditions, peace of mind around their health care by capping the cost that workers will have to pay. And it's about the right to go to a doctor or stay healthy and make sure you're able to have the care you can afford. It's all part of this agreement. They earned and deserve these benefits. And this is a great deal for both sides, in my view. The agreement is also a victory for railway companies. And I want to thank the lead negotiators from the railway, the National Railway Labor Conference and our major rail companies. These companies also played a, uh, a critical role in keeping America moving during the pandemic, and that's not hyperbole, it's a fact. With this agreement, railroad companies will be able to retain and recruit workers. They'll be able to continue to operate effectively as a vital piece of our economy. They're really the backbone of the economy. I have this visual image of rails being the backbone. I mean, literally, the backbone of the economy. So I thank the unions and the rail companies for negotiating in good faith. They met up for 20 straight hours through that negotiation and, uh, and for sticking with it, especially over the last few days. In fact, the negotiators here today, I don't think they've been to bed yet, so <laughs> I don't want to keep this very long and they're having to stand as besides. Together, we reached an agreement, you reached an agreement that will keep our critical rail system working and avoid disruptions of our economy. And I'm grateful, grateful for the members of the administration who work tirelessly on both sides to help get this done. I especially want to thank Labor Secretary Marty Walsh, a card-carrying union member and the first union labor secretary in decades, for his tireless round-the-clock work. <laughs> this agreement is validation, validation of what I've always believed. Unions and management can work together, can work together for the benefit of everyone. They're traveling now. Uh, uh, a number of them, up, but I want to thank Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg and Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, who are deeply involved, along with uh, I want to thank Deputy Labor Secretary Julie Sue, Director of the National Economic Council Brian Deese, and uh, the uh, Deputy National Director of Labor Celeste Drake for this uh, commitment and hard work. To the American people, this agreement can avert the significant damage that any shutdown would have brought. Our nation's rail system is the backbone of our supply chain. Everything you rely on, and it's hard to realize this, from everything from clean water to food to gas to everyday, I mean, liquefied natural gas, to everything, every good that you need seems to end up on a rail getting delivered to where it needs to go. With unemployment still near record lows and signs of progress and lowering costs, this agreement allows us to continue to rebuild a better America with an economy that truly works for working people and their families. Today is a win, and I mean it sincerely, a win for America. So I want to thank you all for getting this done, both business and labor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and may God protect our troops. Thank you so much.